Hey folks, dude here. Well, it's been a while since I've done something knife related, so uh, uh, let me go through two of my newest acquisitions. Okay, for size comparison, we all know the size and relative size of well, a Tecna. It's basically a Tecna, um, roughly about a three inch, three and a half inch blade. Nothing too terrible, crazy. Overall length is uh, uh, just shy of about seven inches or so. It's a pretty good size piece. And I sound dragging ass because I'm dragging ass. I just adopted one of the neighborhood cats, and um, it's not getting along with my other two cats, so I'm really having to play um, kitty referee. Ugh, not good times. All right, well, knife number one. Knife number one is kind of unusual. Um, this one isn't really well marked, I believe, and I do very seriously believe that these were Parkers, and uh, they were not Explorers, but I believe it was a Parker knife. Kind of unusual. Um, you basically have a snap release on the sheet so you can pop it off your belt pretty easy. Kind of super flurry. You really don't need anything crazy like that. But it is not a bad sheet that's plastic. Uh, what's it look like? It looks like this. That's right. It's basically the Ginsu survival knife. Um, you basically have the steel, which probably has holes through it. And it has the plastic, which is then... Uh, put into the mold beside it, put under pressure, squirt it through the holes, becomes one cohesive piece. Is it something I'd want to take in the field and really hack and chop and carry on with? Um, no, but it is very kind of cool looking and it is kind of an interesting period piece. Uh, are they still around? Yeah. Did I get this one really cheap on eBay? Yeah. Nobody else bid on it, they knew what the hell it was. I snarfed it up. You'll notice though it has two different styles of serration. It has one um, fairly aggressive and one that I refer to as Pretty much steak knife. I guess if you need a combat steak knife, you need to have two forms of serration just in case you need something, well, extra tough in your meat. Uh, <laughs> blade length is roughly, uh, I'm going to say right around about four inches or so, comparing it to the Tecna. It's roughly about four inches. Okay, nothing crazy there. Um, now, there's a reason why I took the Tecna out. It's simply because the Tecna is a good piece of comparison and... Basically, you have the large brother to the Tecna, this guy right here. That's right. In blade profile, it's semi-similar, except the blade stock's not thick enough, so it does have flats. Um, the handle is very substantial. It's got six little uh, uh, hex screws holding it in place. Feels, to me, like ABS. Nothing crazy. The stock on this thing is really thick, though, for, well basically a budget knife it, it's yeah it's about a quarter inch six millimeter it, it's roughly about the same thing as the uh, as the Tecna and uh, it's got a couple of nicks on it but the blade itself is in really good shape let me see if I can't macro the stuff on it real real quick for you here uh, I read uh, Valor 440 stainless Seki Japan other side you've got nothing I, I need to chase it down with some polish and clean it up a little bit but it does say the prerequisite stuff. And I'm really dragging tail. That's why I'm sounding kind of poop, because I am. Oh, these kitties have really beaten me up. Well, anyway, the uh, the sheath on this one is kind of Gerberish. I mean, you basically have, like, the two slots here. Um, you got rivets. It's in really good shape. I mean, I, I saw the last one of these on you. On, on not YouTube. But the last one of these I saw on eBay... It went for, um, oh, hell, what was that, like 130 150 bucks somewhere in there? It was just ridiculous, the bidding would have jumped up, and that thing was a boat anchor compared to this one. I mean, it was rusty as hell, it looked like crap, and these are very few and far in between. Uh, believe me, if I could sit the Wayback Machine and uh, cruise on the surplus stores like I used to and snap these things up like I, well, blew off, I would have been buying these things like frickin' hotcakes. Would have been buying these like freaking hotcakes too, because I remember these were fairly cheap. I remember these were only like fourteen ninety five or nineteen ninety five back in the day. If I remember these right, they were probably every bit of about uh, forty forty five dollars or something. Yeah, they were fairly cheap back then. Um, I wish to hell I'd bought up about twenty of them, because now I could make out like a freaking bandit putting one on well eBay every so often, saying, "Oh, I found the treasure trove of lost valors." You can have one! Um, sorry, I've got one. This one's not for sale. It was a bear to find it. And no, I didn't pay too terribly much for it. As a matter of fact, the bidding war was classically humorous. Nobody else bid on this one. So if you cruise eBay, and you're careful when you cruise eBay, and uh, 
Yeah, I've got too many technos as well. If you cruise eBay and you terrorize eBay, you find all kinds of cool stuff. But you gotta know what you're looking for. Um, this one, this one just came down as being 80s knife Japan. I mean, you know, just very generic description. Uh, dude, probably just throw it on her saying, okay, what's this say? Hmm, on here it says, Pat Pending Japan. Okay, if you don't know what the hell this is, you're definitely not going to basically describe it well, but if you know how to do the search parameters, and I do, and you know how to look for stuff, and I do, and you know how to terrorize eBay for stuff, and I have, shall, and will, you'll find all kinds of cool stuff. So basically, here's the long and the short of it of knives. Um, not too terribly short, buddy. Uh, you don't fall too bad by the wayside. Go check that. Anyway, the, um, the cool stuff out there is to be had, but you got to know what you're looking for. If it says Chinese, if it says Taiwanese, if it says anybody but Seki City or Japan, it's crap. Now, here's the other funny thing. is Everybody goes, oh, yeah, Seki City. It's the knife city in Japan. Got bad news for you. If it's a standard template and they want to pass along the idea, they may have already stamped the blank, handed it off to somebody else who then finishes the knife and it's stamped Seki City. Is Seki City really that big a deal? Well, I'll tell you what. If you go to the... Um, Oh, what the hell is that? The the Pajwar Pass or something like that over in, in uh, uh, Afghanistan or, or one of them places. I mean, that's all they do is make guns. Uh, Seki City, pretty much all they do is make knives. Now, in terms of other places in Japan, I'm sure there's a lot of prefectures, and I'm sure there's a lot of other places that really are specialized in their knives, and they make really great stuff. Seki basically gets the name, though. Unfortunately... There's great stuff coming out of other areas. There's wonderful places to get, like, you know, ceramic. Um, Koyashira. Uh, Koyashira basically is, like, a really big name over there. Do you know even what city it comes from? No. I mean, um, a lot of stuff that's sold by other really big names are Japanese knives. SOG, Japanese. Um, there's a G Sakai, Japanese. I mean, you know, uh, Spider Co., Japanese. There's a lot of stuff that comes out of that place because... Those guys are artisans. I mean, you can look at this thing, and you can tell this is a hand-ground knife. The lines are not perfect. As a matter of fact, you would compare two of these side-by-side, side, and they're going to be close. But they will not be exact. You can look at the lines, and they are not perfectly square, because they were done by hand. But because they're not perfectly square, gives it some personality. Every single one of these is going to be, you know, a, a, a hair bigger, a hair smaller, or it's going to have some little tweaks about it that's going to be different. You can see the grinds. They are not exact. Now, also, dirty little secret, the technos were hand ground, so they're not exact. Uh, I got somebody knocking on the bathroom door from the inside out, and they want to come out, and I'm going to have to deal with them. Um, by the way, the new cat's name is Orange, because he's an orange tabby, and he's a really, really nice cat, but we're having some teething problems. Ugh, never good times introducing new cats to old cats, because... The two old cats go, hey, let's gang up and really duke it out with this new guy. Uh, the new guy's not a crap taker either, so I've had to break up a couple fights, and this is just after being neutered. So dude is not slouching in terms of having a pair, um, even after losing a pair. Ugh. Uh, in terms of minor channel updates, um, Demon Hyde has now got a video up on um, one of his Marlins that I worked up for him. Um, I will get... Uh, I can't talk, man. I'm just dragging ass here. Uh, I will have uh, by person pricing. If you contact me and you want me to work on your Marlins, just give me an idea of what you want to do. Give me an idea of how much you want to spend. And, of course, then we can meet somewhere in the middle. And I'm not doing this to get rich. I'm basically doing this because I can do this. It's some extra scratch. And, well, it's not hard to work on Marlins if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing... You can really screw it up. It's like anything else. you got to know the techniques. Well, anyway, folks, um, thanks again for tuning in here on the 80s Podcast channel. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for all the amazing uh, compliments and everybody who really, truly liked my jerky. If you want to get my jerky, pricing and other stuff will be coming along by the wayside. And um, I just got to do a cost-specific analysis and figure out just how much it's going to cost to buy meat, flavor meat, sell meat, and ship meat. Um I don't want to make this like a $50 pound proposition, and that's just ridiculous. I mean, you know, there's, there's okay stuff to be had, and I can tell you for a fact, the local stuff holds nothing on the homebrew. Mm, not at all. I'm scarfing this stuff down, and I make it all the time, and I'm sick of smelling it. So, there's got to be something to it, and, um, buy my jerky. Uh,
let me work on your stuff. Um, 80s Podcast Channel, thank you so much for turning in and tuning in and checking out my stuff. Good times. See ya. And as always, always,